this is another long time video coming doing the hub service on the truck uh, i actually started recording video clips for this geez probably four months ago majority of them were recorded pulling apart the uh driver's side rear uh when i was troubleshooting my uh central tire inflation system and i realized i had forgot to record a few things accidentally deleted a couple things from my phone so uh this entire video is going to cover just going over the tools parts and what i did going over the hub service so we'll dig into that okay a whole bunch of tools and supplies for doing the hub service uh grease gun rags got my impact a whole bunch of different picks a pretty decent sized flathead screwdriver big pry bar an angled kind of pry bar thing this particular thing is like a uh, body clip panel, uh, another body clip panel piece, little flashlight. Uh, I didn't show it during my recording, but I ended up using a paint marker to mark the splines on the lining up the two studs that are on the axle nut. And you'll see what I'm talking about because I suggested it and then I ended up using it off the camera. 7 eighths, 1 1 16th, uh, banjo bolt and CTIS armor. PB blaster is great, soak everything. This big old socket right here is for the axle nut. It is a three and seven eighths. It probably isn't something you're gonna have. Uh, I'll have a link in the description for it. Nine sixteenths, these are two different nine sixteenths drives. Eight millimeter Allen key. Gotta splice this in as I was editing. Forgot to 38 millimeter for the lug nuts. Whole bunch of different brushes and stuff like that for cleaning things off. Torque wrench, regular ratchet. This special tool right here is for doing the depth measurement on the uh, hub shims. Link to the eBay listing in the description. You will also need to get yourself some 3 8 16 bolts that are a little bit shorter. I found these in my hardware bin to attach them to the hub. You'll see when it gets to that. Just showing a tube of the grease I used. Um, O-ring lube. A uh, little file for in case you have any marring. Snap ring pliers for taking off the end of the axle. This goes with the RTV. Three-quarter wrench for caging the brakes. These are caging bolts. I recommend having something to write with when you're doing your depth. Uh, a dial caliper. Definitely needed. Some various hammers. Punch. These right here are the drivers I used for the seals. They're not perfect, but it's also a hell of a lot cheaper than buying or having the ones made that are in the TM. The bigger one being for the seal that's on the back side of the hub for the bearing and using this one for the CTIS seals and this is the driver that comes with it. Links in the description. I had multiple of these. I didn't end up needing them. Uh, shim kits for the axles. It's kit 4715. I'll put a link to these. And then also part number 5X1155 the NSN 5331-01-3902-1637. These are the O-rings that go on all fours of the, the gear at the end <clears throat> of the axle. You have to replace those. Gloves, shovel. Forgot to record a clip with the seals and the part numbers. So we'll start with this one. My little helper's holding. That's the CTIS seal. Part number is A. 1205Q24305. Right, Sydney? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You want to hold this one for me next? That plastic little part that goes over the CTIS seal. 2297R6648. And then the inner hub seal. A. 1205R2254. Links in the description. Sections covering this in the TM are 10 TAC 2. And it's in TM number 9 or TAC 2320, TAC 365, TAC 20, TAC 3. Also, there, there's another section either right before or right after that goes along with this that's pretty good with the tool. They send some instructions on how to do the depth thing that are a little bit more helpful, which is cool. You'll also need gear oil, uh, 75 weight, 90 Lucas oil. All right, got all my tools ready. I got jack stands and bottle jack in place, so 
obviously first step is to get the wheel and everything off. So I'm going to leave the wheel on the ground and get everything loose, jack it up, get the wheel and tire off, and move on from there. Okay, the next step is to cage the brakes. I've never done this before. I don't think it's rocket science. You pull your plugs out and then you can see that in the edge of it there is a way for these cage bolts to fit. You put it in there and then you're going to feel it hit another wall of some sort. You kind of got to twist it, get it in there. Once the prongs get past it all the way, you don't want it to pull out is the idea. So you turn it like a quarter of a turn and then you should feel it lock into place. So pull out on it, feel it lock, and then twist it to make sure, and then tighten the nut down. And these are three quarters on these cage bolts. And then from here, you're just gonna tighten it by hand until you feel it stop. And you're gonna have to do it on both sides. brake drum came off easy so the next step is to remove the actual hub cover. I've seen some people take this nut off. I don't see any reason to since I'm disassembling the whole thing anyway but you'd remove this nut and use the bolt to pull the axle if you were towing. I got my allen key size in here for the fill which since it's on the truck and it's going to be in the most stable position it's going to be in I'm going to make sure that this is loose. Uh, I've never had it off who knows when it's come off and then I got my socket size here, so once I get that off, I'll be able to go around and loosen all these up, and I'm probably going to have to hit it with a mallet uh, to loosen it. Make sure you have your drain pan ready, because once you start undoing all this stuff, the oil that's in here for the gears at the end of the axle is going to come out. That's not a good sign. the last of it. I'll need to spend some time and clean this up and then uh, start cleaning everything up in the garage. It's hot and humid as hell. So I'm going to do all the cleaning up out here. I got the air inside cooling off the garage. All right, so everything's cleaned up to my liking. A little bit of marking and stuff on the axle, but to be expected. Uh, nothing seems terrible on here. Uh, none of these grooves are really noticeably deep or anything like that. Uh, teeny tiny spots of rust on the threads and somewhere it looks like the outer CTIS seal rides. I may take like an emery cloth and try to get rid of that, but at the same time, I mean, I can't feel it pressing as hard as I can with my thumb on there and I just shoved some clean shop towels in there just to kind of keep the rest of that fluid from coming out. All right, so I got most of the gears, bearings and stuff like that cleaned up, laid out, ready. Uh, last thing is to lay into the hub. And I wanted to go back and revisit something. I pointed out that I thought there was metal chips. It wasn't metal chips. They're just stuck to it. It's uh, RTV. So everything looks good. Uh, I was concerned about that. But all that excess RTV was like all over the place. Inside the gears. Uh, actually, not so much in the gears, but in the bearings and stuff like that. And on the bolts, cleaned it all up. At this point... I'm probably not going to take this all the way apart. Looked at it, turned it, everything I can see, it's clean. Some of the people watching this will probably disagree, just like they're going to disagree that I'm not going to service the brakes, but uh, time is, is a constraint for me. Everything looked good. I don't see anything on the gears that look like abnormal wear or anything like that. 
the only thing I'll do is replace the O-rings when it gets to that point. So I'm going to work on the hub now. All right, I moved the hub to the floor. It's easier to record this way and also a little bit easier since my bench is high. But you can see, you should be able to see in the recording, there's uh, like that blue ring. Think of it like a spring and you just kind of work it out. You're looking at the hub. This is going towards the differential. Okay, that was simple. And the next thing should be, there's like a little plastic piece that's going up to the CTIS seal that's in there. And then the next thing in there should be the CTIS seal. I doubt I'm gonna be able to just pull this out. The most obvious one is right by where the tip of this pick is, and there's a couple of them going this way. It looks like someone, instead of using a proper driver to push this in, they used a punch. So I'm gonna flip it over so I can do the same thing on the other side. More RTV crap in there. So I guess now, since I don't I don't have like a something really good to pull with force, I'm just gonna use a regular punch since I'm not concerned about damaging the seals. And I'm just gonna punch from this side to punch the other side out and then flip it and vice versa and we'll have it open so I can clean it. Anyway, got those out. These you're gonna wanna save. I did buy some spare of these plastic in case I found them crap. Uh crap. Cracked. Cracked would be crap. But these look like they're in good shape. I'll probably just reuse them. Now it's just going to be kind of cleaning up everything in here. Got everything cleaned up, and the only thing I see of concern is at some point, looks like somebody replaced the races for the bearings in here, and there's a couple nicks, but they don't seem terrible. I'm just going to kind of go with it, and I'm going to start reassembling. Got everything laid out here. I inspected these for cracks or anything like that. Seem good, both of them. And uh, I got the new seal for the inside of the hub and the new CTIS seals, grease gun, and my driver. I didn't realize in the fast forward, uh, I did a really bad job of showing this. So when you're using the seal driver on the back side of the hub, grease it up just a littlest bit. It doesn't fit the way that it's intended for the oil seal, that national oil. You gotta use it backwards and just kinda push it on that way. You could honestly probably get away without using a driver like this and just lightly go around and tap it with a soft mallet. I think it just, for the cost of this, since you're buying the driver for the other piece, that way you're getting a nice even drive to make sure it pushes in there, get it nice and flush to not take the chance of damaging it. Then when you're putting in the CTIS seals, at least for me, I was having a hard time getting them to actually push all the way in. Um, I put a little light coating of grease on there, would push them in, and then it seemed like what they wanted to do was start trying to work their way back out. And then you have to put this on top of it, and then that little circular piece. And I was having a hard time getting this to seat all the way down with that little locking ring being able to seat all the way in. And what I ended up needing to do, what I did not really like doing, but it was the only thing I could do. I don't know if you could tell in the fast forward because I sped it up really, really fast, but we sat there for like 40 minutes. I ended up needing to beat on it like this with the seal driver on top of the plastic to be able to get an even enough push to get it all the way down to then be able to make sure that seat was in all the way. 
All right, next step's just gonna be putting the hub back on, putting it on, and then it's the outer wheel bearing, and then the nut, and then after that is when you do the measurements. All right, so the next part you gotta kinda finesse here is sliding the inner gear onto the splines and getting the holes in it to match up with what's on the nut. So this is just one of those games, put it on and, and try your best to get it. I probably should have made like a little mark on here and then the gear to get me close. But if you have to, you might need to pull your shims off and then slightly adjust that nut, either tightening it or loosening it. So I put the tool on here. You need uh, 3 8 16 bolts. You can't use the ones that come uh, to put the cover on because they don't have enough thread. So you put your nut, you set your nut the way it needs to, put your shims, put the tool on, tighten these down snug, tighten this down, and then use a, a caliper. You have to measure your depth. Now, the TM goes off of a measurement from the shim face to the hub face right here, but with the tool. You have to measure the thickness of the tool and add that to the tolerance depth. So I measured my tool, it was 0.752. The range that the TM gives you is 7.168 to 2173. So that makes a new range of 2.920 to 2.925. And then it's got the little holes and you just take the depth measurement on each side make sure I didn't measure it at first make sure you're uh, even push it down and then take your reading and uh, mine is at two point like nine two on both sides give or take so I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to add or take out any shims. But you would need to, if you did have to change the shims, loosen these a bit, take the bolts off, put a new shim or take a shim off, and you got to keep doing it until you get it to where it's within the uh, uh, proper tolerance. Okay, the next thing is to replace the four O-rings because this is going back on again. goodness for this breeze all right off camera I slid the axle back in nothing too special about it just get it in there and finagle with it until you feel it go in and go to twist it and make sure it's engaged next step is gonna be putting the whole gear back on then the cover it's gonna be one of those things kind of got to do it all together it's gonna be a pain get everything to line up you're gonna have to push up on the axle a little bit to get everything in place and once you get the gear in there somebody boogered that up pretty good at some point just noticed that put some of the gasket maker around everything. Already got the O-rings replaced. Then once you get all that, you put the snap ring on first to kind of hold everything together. Then put the cover on, then you got the bearing, and then there's a little sleeve behind it that they don't really come out that easy. I still left a lot of oil on them, which is good. They kind of stick. You gotta make sure that these are in there the right way. And then, the bolts. A uh, quick note before putting this together. Similar to the bearings inside the cover, there's some really thin bearings that go in between this like angled piece and the gear. When you're putting it together, you want to make sure that they're all, like for example, see how this one's pressed together all the way? Just make sure it's together. I mean, it's, it's not going to go into the hub if it's not the right way. So... this I push the axle in a little bit one of the bolts from the cover to pull it out enough and get this snap ring back on there it didn't really come too much farther apart now again just make sure you didn't get anything crazy dirty on the hub surface I'm gonna wipe it all again and then 
there's no real guidance on putting the RTV on here from O-ring to O-ring and then I'm just going to kind of do a bead on the outside, bead on the inside. Okay, the TM on these, I thought it had like a sequence to uh, tighten them. I'm going to have to go get the right size socket for them if they understand what I'm saying. Um, a certain sequence, I mean, use common sense in, in crisscross, sort of like doing your lug nuts. It's 35 to 50, so I'm going to do 45. Uh all right, went all the way around. Now, my uh, gasket maker that I used here, I just keeps squirting out here, making a mess, um, says to install and then let it sit for the, the vehicle to sit for an hour. What I'll probably do is coming up here on dinner time anyway. I'm going to put the plug in there just to make sure dust doesn't go into. All right, this part is going to follow up with the hub service. I did both sides. Since you service both side hubs, all that oil was coming out when I was servicing the uh, driver side because this does share. Your hubs share the oil with the differential. So if you're going to service your hubs, you're going to have to fill your differential. So whether you're going to completely drain like I'm going to show and replace everything or just top it back off, it's up to you. Should be relatively simple. The only thing that's a pain in the ass is going to be that there's your fill trying to put all the oil into the axle through that hole, unless you're using a pump, it's gonna be a pain. So what I'm gonna do is probably route a hose. Okay, I'm under the truck. It's a half inch drive ratchet. You just stick it in there. Uh, it's magnetized. Check it, make sure it's clean. And uh, I just stuck it up top so I won't lose it. And then I had some hose laying around. <laughs> you can get some of this hose at like Home Depot, or if I had an old garden hose, I might cut it up. And I wish it was a little bit longer, but I ran it over and zip tied the funnel, so I'll be able to just pour the oil here and let it get into the differential instead of trying to squirt a little bit at a time. And then a five gallon bucket does fit underneath. And same thing on that plug. It's a half inch ratchet uh, connection. So loosen it, take it off, let it all drain out. I'm not gonna record that part because uh, it's just fluid coming out. All right, looks like we're pretty much drained out. I uh, cleaned up while I was waiting both of the uh, plugs. I uh, did have a fair amount of stuff stuck to the magnet on the uh, drain plug. But when I looked at it, most of it was really gooey. My best guess is when I did the hubs, both sides, especially the one I did off camera, there was a ton of extra RTV in there. And similar to the plug when I pulled it off on the hub, I think the RTV maybe just got a teeny tiny bit of metal shaving in it and then it caused it all to stick to it because it was like real gooey. Either that or might have been some oil sludge even though the oil is pretty darn clean coming out of here. But uh, I'm going to let that finish dripping a little bit more, plug it back up, and then start filling. Alright, put 13 quarts in. Got me uh, plugged back up, everything put away. Uh, I believe it's 13.05 quarts is what is supposed to go in there, a .05 is probably left in there. And then inside the hole, I just put my finger down, I could feel it, and the truck is at a slight incline forward, so it should be good. But I'm going to take it out for a ride, top it off with diesel, and then come back, and I'm going to check it again after it cools down and make sure I'm at a level spot. But um, I recommend you do that as well. And uh, swapping that oil is probably one of the easiest things to do on this truck. Okay, hey, just got back from my drive, good 30 miles round trip. And uh, mostly highway, so I got it nice and hot. I'm not seeing any leaks, at least at the time being, from the hub seals. Nothing from the drains. And once it cools off a little bit, I will check it for the level, but seems like it's good. And since I have all the stuff out to do it, I may change the oil and the front axle too. 
like I was saying earlier, the front axle is independent from the hubs. So then the last thing is when I pull these front hub wheels apart to service them, at some point I'll change that oil. And I know it's all been changed. I'm going to do kind of the same thing. Uh, the only difference is the capacity up here in the front. I drained and refilled the front axle. I'm going to put a caption with the capacity. And uh, I'll be honest, I haven't serviced the front axle uh, hubs as you were because the rear ones were in such good shape and didn't really need any adjustment as far as the spacers. I haven't found the need. But there shouldn't really be anything different servicing the front hubs from the rear except for the fact that the front axle has the knuckle in it for being able to turn but the service procedure is exactly the same and then when you put everything back together because the differential does not share oil you're going to put it back together move the truck so you can get to the fill and then you're going to put the right amount of fluid in there which i'll put in a caption and then check it to make sure it's good and has the amount of fluid that needs to be in there and check for leaks and stuff. If for some reason there's anything extra to the front that I didn't realize when I actually do the front, uh, I'll follow up in the comments, but I don't think that there is. So there you have it.